Yes, yes, yes. What is happening? And welcome to episode four, four, my dislocated finger there, of 12 of our Deep Dive and Remember the Mission book. Okay, so basically what we're doing for those who haven't seen this before is that we are um, going through this book or as much as possible over the next four weeks to make sure that you guys get the most out of this book and get deep insights. So what I'm going to do is just let people know that we're live by just sending this link out. So just give me one minute and then we're going to be diving straight in to episode four. Boom. And boom. Okay, so if you are coming through, then let me know that you're watching live. If you're watching back, then let me know that you're watching back. Okay, so we're going to do some more work on this as well as the 12 episode deep dive. We're now running a Mission Mastery Masterclass, which is a dedicated one time masterclass that I'm going to be running on Wednesday, the 22nd of May. And on that, we're going to put into place five steps that allow you to make sure that you create a path of success for the rest of the year, right? So I often look at it as that if you support a sports team, they're going at half time and they're down. We often comment that they've got to really step it up when they come back out to win, to bring it back. And that's in theory what we're looking to do for um, many of the guys that are looking to build their life mission, that are looking to find purpose, create direction, and embrace more of life, right? So if the first year hasn't gone the way that you wanted, it's not the end of the world because we can come out fighting the second half of the year. And I believe that with the masterclass that we're going to teach, that you'll be able to get more insight, more implementation, and more action than you did in the last 12 months. So that when we wake up on the 31st of December, we are super focused on what it is that we've achieved, but we also feel like we've progressed. Because if I asked you the question of, how would you feel if you woke up at the end of the year and nothing changed from the way you are now? It probably is quite a painful experience for you, right? So let's crack on with the book here. We're going into the second half of um, the chapter, which was expectations versus current conditioning. Now that's, um, the first part of it was very much looking at our self-limiting beliefs, understanding ourselves, and fine-tuning ourselves to understand the situation of us better, okay? So we're gonna crack through this chapter now. So the next step is the process. What I'm going to suggest isn't um, going to be easy, nor is it a quick fix. But to me, the key to your success is immersing yourself in a process and following the process until the day that you die. Okay, early, <laughs> setting the standard early there, right? So a process is coming away from a quick fad and understanding, um, understanding how to jump onto a system that becomes a new way of life. So the way that I look at things is that everything that we do for men is about permanent change. And that means that we have to change the messaging that goes into our brain. When you are following a process, you are following a series of events that will eventually lead to an outcome you desire. And that brings you direction, consistency, control, and clarity to your mission. You might be putting yourself in a situation that takes you out of your comfort zone. Facing something that you may not have done for a while, causing you anxiety and fear, making you feel vulnerable and more than likely exposing you to failure. But that is a good thing. People's relationship with failure is twisted. Okay, failing is a good thing, guys. As a result of failing more, you will be developing more. You'll be learning and becoming more resilient and robust to deal with the struggles and battles of your life. You'll be creating your elite operator personality through the process. You'll be finding out who you really are, what your character is like, and building clarity about the type of identity you are becoming. So it's really difficult for guys to understand who they want to be because they don't put themselves on the line. Too many guys are just finding excuses not to confront the man in the mirror. And I had a conversation with a guy today and we were talking about like men that are in their 40s and 50s. We don't have that amount of time to keep fucking up, messing up, right? We have to ensure that the next moves, i.e. the next five years onwards, 
we make the right decisions, that we get ourselves back on track because there will become a point in time when you turn around and go, man, I missed that opportunity. Man, it's, I've wasted another five years and you can't afford to waste another five years if you are in your 40s or your 50s or even in your 30s because you want to be setting yourself up to win long term, right? Okay, so for those just joining us, we're going through um, episode four of the book. In theory, you'll be starting the process of learning, growing and being able to repeat the process. But we can only do that by putting ourselves on the line and failing more in a bid to learn more and grow more. Right. We're going to be able to take those failures to learn and grow. One, uh, when you don't have a process of your own and you are uh, that you are following, you tend to fall down amongst the chaos that life throws at you. You become swallowed up by toxic and negative people and environments consumed by external distractions and destructive coping mechanisms such as booze, drugs or food. You fail to know who you really are and where your life is heading. You feel as though your life has no meaning to it. I've experienced this myself and witnessed many other guys go through the same scenarios and mindset. And it's like, it just reads negative, but it's truth, guys. This is the reflection in the mirror talking back to you, okay? You've got to get it through to your system. You've got to change your ways. And that's the only way we're gonna do it, right? It's by recognizing the consequences. There are always going to be people who try to drag you down. There's always going to be those days that you have a lack of desire and passion to show up. The hardships of life will probably never change and you'll find yourself accepting those punches in the face from life without fighting back. However, the one thing that can change is you and your attitude, mindset and character when you face these situations. I'm guessing you're reading this book right now because you want to have better control and more consistency in being able to stay on top of your life. So why are you letting life punch you in the face and doing nothing about it? What's happened to stop you showing up? If it came up to you in the street and started swinging, I'm sure you'd fight back to defend yourself, yeah? So why aren't you doing that in your life now instead of hiding behind the bottle or the masks you wear or the ego of excuses that you make up? You need to a process, you need order, structure, the long-term mission to remind you to show up every day so that you are not being overpowered by the chaos all the time. An elite operator without a mission is like a soldier without a gun. It's time to create the mission and build the process. Okay, so we're just kind of setting the scene there in terms of understanding the process, how important that process is in terms of creating you and not being afraid of the failure that comes with the process, right? The long-term mission. When I was 15, my teacher asked me where I saw myself in 10 years time. Until that point, I had never thought that far into my future. The furthest I had considered was a couple of years with college on the horizon. Even now, 25 years later, I can still remember the thought process I went through when I asked the question in the end. Oh, in question. In the end, I replied I wanted to be a pilot because I wanted to travel the world. But the truth is, I had absolutely no idea. I was 15 and I couldn't possibly imagine where I'd be at 25 years old. And that's if you think where most men are now, right? Most men are 40. They never think they're going to hit 45. They never think they're going to hit 50. They never think they're going to hit 55 or 60. And then they do. And they're like, where's the last five years gone? What have I achieved? What has changed? That's that painful reminder. And that's why we're so passionate about trying to get men building their life mission, right? Because if we don't get that life mission up and running, then we are just gonna drift through that river of chaos with nothing changing. I expect you'll experience the same feelings as I did when I asked you that same question. But I want you to spend the next few days visualizing where you'd like to be in 10 years from now. And I think if I was rewriting the book, I would say five years from now. I use the word visualize and don't mention goals because vision has more flexibility. It allows you to use your imagination. Be creative and be ambitious. It doesn't set the pressure of concrete goals that will undoubtedly change over a long period of time. So just flirt with various visions 
uh, of where you'd like to be in each of the four pillars, health, relationships, personal development, and business. And then I'll give you concrete tasks to follow at the end of the chapter. Okay, so what we're talking about is that long-term, we don't necessarily have to focus on the plan because plans change. It's more long-term about the visual visualization. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Okay, how would it make your life happy? How will it give you fulfillment? So we've already gone through a couple of things. So it could be if you were trying to be financially free, if you were trying to run your own business, if you wanted to travel the world, these are things that you would visualize you doing in five years. A vision is a great way to emotionally connect with your mission. It allows you to picture the direction you want your life to go in. And you can see the stepping stones of how you can progress your life. It's not as fixed as a set goal because it allows flexibility in your thinking, but it nevertheless creates a powerful image of how you see your life progressing. The goals are what we focus on more at the beginning of your five years. When you've reversed engineered the process, for example, to achieve a five year vision, you might set goals to reach a milestone in 12 months from now, then quarterly goals, then weekly goals, then daily. These are all micro steps in making the vision, i.e. your mission, a reality. So what we're doing is we're going right to the end point. This is how I visualize the next five years. But then this is what I need to achieve after the first year. Cool, I've got that. So this, this is what I need to create over the next 12 weeks. So that becomes more of a concrete plan. And then this is what I need to achieve in the first 28 days. Cool, that is like bomb proof. And then in the first week, bang, this is what I need to do. So suddenly we have this life mission that we're doing week by week, but it's taken us to a bigger place. Does that make sense? Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, on those days when you are feeling lost and unguided, when you have the dark cloud around your mind or have just have a bad day and don't feel you want to show up, you can then come back to this mission you've created. You can remember the mission. Remember the mission is almost, uh, it almost becomes your blueprint to the bigger picture, which in time will help you put a lot of your day-to-day -day dramas into perspective. It helps you see the bigger issues going on in your life and takes your pattern of thought to more long-term strategy rather than quick fix. When you are working to a longer term process, the small micro distractions don't seem so bad. And you are able to deflect more of what life throws at you and still remain focused on the bigger picture, your mission. It really brings perspective to the situation that's happening in your life at the moment. It's your clarity, it's your path, and you will form a stronger, clearer identity from following this vision and also the foundations you are building. All right, so we're starting to really make that understand the process. We're starting to understand the long-term mission. Everything kind of connecting back to that mission. And I always say, if you have one bad day, it doesn't mean you have to have one bad week, okay? And one bad week doesn't lead to one bad month and, and so on, yeah? Don't have any self-limiting beliefs. One of the biggest barriers to people fulfilling their potential is the I'm not good enough. I think my mic might have died there. So I'm back here now, if you can see it. Actually, you can't see any comments if you are commenting. For some reason, Facebook have not shown me any. So hopefully you can still hear me. One of the biggest barriers to people fulfilling their potential is that I'm not good enough mentality, okay? Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. You limit your progress based on what you think you are capable of, on your confidence, past experience, childhood, or even comparing yourself to other people. When I thought about writing this book, my first book is a state of mind. My own state of mind was filling with self-doubt because I did so poorly at school. My English teacher used to tell me I wouldn't amount to anything because I was so poor at English, which I still am in theory. <laughs> so I was allowing the self-belief from my experience at school to stop me from writing a book. I genuinely believed I wasn't good enough to write it and I still have elements of doubt about this one. 
I worry whether I would give people the value that they deserve. Okay, I'm going to take this out. Boom. Here we go. Right, I'm taking the mic out because it is not working. So it might not be as good sound quality. Um, I think there is a connection between self-doubt and overthinking. But as you are now reading the book, I've obviously got over those feelings of self-doubt. And you must do the same if you're ever going to thrive like an elite operator in your own life. When you set your missions, always be positive and don't doubt what you are capable of, what you can achieve. Currently, you are only operating a fraction of what you are capable of and you have much more to give. So don't allow anything or any one to change that thought. So this book is a perfect example, right? I think in my GCSE, I got like a an E or something, right? And then I redid it like two years later and, and got a B. Um, but I think our self-limiting beliefs are based off a lot of the things that we're told as a, as a kid, like, you know, you're not good enough or man up or whatever it might be. And a lot of it is probably from childhood trauma um, or just negative relationships or just people you used to hang about with, right? So our self-limiting beliefs become limited. So we can only think we can achieve it. This is a huge one in jiu-jitsu, actually. So I often find that how well I roll will determine on my own self, self-belief, self right? Huge, absolutely monumental. If I believe in what I'm doing, I can get the better of 80% of the people. If I don't, 80% of the people will get the better of me. And that's because I just don't believe in what I'm doing. And it is huge. And it starts with the conversation that we're often having in our head right here, bang. All right, so that is what we've got to change. Don't overthink. Again, it's easy to say, um, harder to do. So let's get into this. As humans, humans, we have the tendency to overthink everything, which creates, uh, we create statements like, if I write this, then that will happen. Or, but what if? And I can't do that because, and that's a huge contribution to why you are always anxious. You probably overthink being anxious and create the problem in your mind that doesn't even fucking exist. That's like the pain of the majority of men, right? When it comes to putting your mission together, just write freely about what your vision is because it's likely to change in some way, shape or form over time. The purpose right now is to simply write down things you'd like to achieve, to find some clarity about what you want in life and show a little ambitious without stressing about the what ifs. Start getting your ideas down on paper and start getting excited about the future again, right? So the overthinking is what stops a lot of people doing the task, or should I be doing it like this, or but what if this, and like it just becomes BS inside of your head, and it becomes the culprit to you actually not really following up, right? Where you want to be, not think you should be. Forget what others tell you, past experiences, possible outcomes, or social expectations of where you should or shouldn't be. You aren't trying to live the life that others think you should. You are living the life you want to live. It's inevitable these, that these factors will creep into your head and influence what you write down. But you need to ignore them. Don't worry about being judged or questioned about the things you want to do. Fuck them. This is your life to live how you want. Elite operators pay no attention to the noise outside of their world, okay? And by the way, the majority of those people are often people that don't want to see you progress because they live such shit lives themselves. And if you grow and leave the nest of crabs, it means that they have to start looking at themselves and they have to endure feelings of jealousy. So fuck them, get away from them. If you work in a corporate company, but want to start your own business, write down that you want to start your own business or a side hustle, free of judgment or scrutiny and with confidence. If you want to travel for six months and it means taking the kids out of school, but you're worried about what others think, fuck them and their thoughts, write it down. This is about you being happier in your life, not theirs. 
Don't get to your deathbed and regret not taking action. Don't write down what you think you should be doing because society dictates that's the right thing to do. This is your life. In the last few hours of your life, you want to be able to look back at that life and say, fuck yeah, I lived. I did what I wanted and I lived on my own terms, okay? Too many people are dictated by the fucking system. Fuck the system. Pisses me off. And I could spend a whole fucking podcast talking about the system and about what is right or what is wrong. What is right and what is wrong is in your own head, in your own life. You interpret what is right. So if you want to fucking travel and you want to take the kids out and anyone's fucking snipey comments, just ignore them or choke them out, one of the two, and make sure you, if you choke them out, you do it in the playground so everyone can see. Be ambitious, but realistic. If you have bad knees, it's unrealistic to write down that you want to run 26 miles. If you have back issues, why would you choose to say you're going to deadlift 200 kilograms? You need to use a little common sense when setting your visions to create your mission, okay? I know that's hard for a lot of men, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> A guy in the mastermind once told me that he wanted to run 10 miles in nine months. I told him to book a marathon for the day he told me he wanted to achieve this 10 mile run. And he did. And as a result, he managed to run those 10 miles just three weeks after our conversation. He did not have a clear understanding of what he was capable of. But as his coach, I did. I would never have suggested a marathon if I did not think it was realistic. He has since uh, completed the marathon and a 53 mile ultra race and has raised his own standards in the process and has actually recently just done another marathon. You have no idea what you're capable of. So find the balance of your limits between what is too much and too little, what is ambitious and what is realistic. That balancing act comes from you being honest with yourself dropping the ego and learning about yourself as you evolve. Um, um, um. Okay, last little bit, guys. It can and will change. Wants and needs will always evolve as you do. And as your surroundings change, it's part of the evolution of being human. So expect your vision slash mission to adjust at times. And it's okay that this happens. What is not okay is if you don't adapt when things do evolve. As you learn and grow, you'll, you'll more than likely demand more from yourself. If you are following a mission and your environment changes, but you fail to adapt, you are going to face conflict in the direction you are heading. And you'll become frustrated at the lack of progress you'll make. Having the ability to be able to adapt and overcome change in your mission is the key quality and one you'll implement as you uh, flow through the process. So there is a case study here, guys. I'm not going to go through the case study because there's diagrams in here and it's very difficult for me to be able to explain things without seeing a diagram. But if you've got the book, you can see it. OK. Um, so in theory, what we're trying to understand there, okay, expectations, expectations versus current conditioning, is there's a lot of stuff on self-limiting beliefs there, a lot of stuff on not like getting influenced by other people, there's a lot of stuff there on what we need to do and understanding. At the end of the day, I can promise you that anyone that listens to me, only 10% will take action, 5 to 10%. Okay, and I think I've got about 70,000 followers, which means that in theory, like, I reckon that 7,000, according to statistics, would do something about their life. But in realistic terms, I reckon less than 1,000 would do something about their life. Having listened to a lot of this stuff, because too many people are consumed in their own lives, in their own chaos, in their own inner narrative, in their own procrastination. And there has to be monumental action to change. We have to find that life mission, right? So we're doing a mission mastery masterclass, which is what I uh, was talking about at the very start, right? And I reckon at least 100 people would join that. And I reckon that at least 20 people will show up. And it's that mentality that will stop people reaching their potential. 
it would, could be the difference between saving a marriage and not saving a marriage. Having a strong relationship with your kid and not. Having a stroke because you're stressed at work. Feeling good and better about yourself, stopping drinking, going for something, asking a girl out, going traveling, starting the business, whatever it might be. It all starts with like your expectations and your current conditioning and knowing the start point because it's, a, it's hard. Like personal, professional development is really fucking hard. You know, and I'm not selling it probably. But as soon as you get your momentum, as soon as you get your second wind and you get going, I promise you it becomes so much easier because the weight doesn't feel as heavy. You know, like it's like when you first start not drinking. If you quit drinking at the very start, it's like, oh my God, it's like, it's like quitting anything. Any addiction at the start is monumental. And then it becomes a way of life. And then it almost becomes about like not having that first drink, not having that first cigarette, not watching that firm, first porn movie, whatever you're addicted to. And then it becomes a lot easier because it becomes part of your identity and your character, right? And that's the important thing to understand. All right, amigos. So next one is Wednesday, one o'clock. We'll be going through how you do anything is how you do everything which is a really good chapter, actually, because it sets the standards and the disciplines, okay? If you haven't registered for the masterclass, it's attached to this post somewhere in the description. Get the link, get your place in early before the places do disappear and show the fuck up to it, eh?